Greetings and welcome, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, to episode 304 of the Words About Games podcast, the weekly news, culture, and discussion podcast for Words About Games. I'm your host, Amy Kate Alexander. I'm joined this week by Hot Tuna himself. Thanks for wearing the I dust, t-shirt. I dusted it off for you, Amy. I knew you Just did. You. I know you did. <laughs> it's monday you know what that means everybody i hope everyone's had a good week staff staff mooney i didn't actually say your name everyone <gasps> might just assume you're hot cold hot tuna hot tuna <laughs> mr my tuna. new name hot tuna let's ask my partner this <laughs> oh yeah sure i'll go down well <laughs> just look at you like you're an idiot my name has been deleted it is now hot tuna dead easy hot to change your name tuna. Tuna. My name is Tuna. Hot Tuna. No. No. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I take it back. It's gonna work for you, Amy. <laughs> I take it back. Don't do that. How are you? How's how's it going? Not bad. Life is not bad at all. I'm pretty, pretty chill. Pretty good at this moment in time. It's weird saying that because I've had a shit 18 months. <laughs> 2021 weren't a good year for me, as I've said on multiple occasions. And this year kind of started a bit slow and a bit rocky as well. And I was just like, oh god, <laughs> that's been kind of on open up a little bit. Positivity's been working. Positivity throwing some positive vibes out into the universe. It's all good. Good so far. It's like a honeymoon period right now. I don't want to get off it. Um, sure. Like I don't want to return okay. home, <laughs> even though I am home. But you know what I mean. You get the reference. Yeah, sure, I do, totally. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm Fair glad. Enough. I'm happy for you. Yeah. You deserve it. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you? How's your week off been? Yeah, you know, I um, wasn't a week off where I was like, I'm going to do all the stuff. Like, I literally planned a week off to be like, I'm going to do nothing. Or as close to nothing as I can physically manage. So I did that. Basically. I respect this. I finally got my... The, the saga of the nose piercing is finally over. I finally got my nose yeah. pierced. Yes, you did. And I had no idea what you were sending me a picture for. <laughs> See a I was picture. Just like, yeah, looking good. What is this? Basically, my nose. Oh. And you were like, Ooh. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. And considering I sent the message, so I, I, what was it I said? I spent the day getting intentionally stabbed. Yeah. In the face, like, how was your day? And like, you still didn't like. And then it was like hours later, you went, "Oh, I just realized why you sent me this picture." And I was like, "What the fuck did you think I meant when I said I spent the day getting stabbed in the face?" <laughs> it's not Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just like, I ain't getting into it. That's Amy's says something. Go for it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, um, that's she's always... enjoyed it. She looks happy. That's all that matters. Get out with it. Get, let's get out of it. Cause I, <laughs> that's because I just eaten KFC. I was like, I don't know if you know this, but getting a piercing is kind of painful. Go figure, right? So I was like, I'm going to treat myself to some good food. Chicken. And, and KFC was so, empty. So I went, oh. I was going to say good food, and then you picked KFC. <laughs> yes, because it's good food. I like it. Mm, okay. Glad you enjoy it, Amy. That's all that matters. I'm gonna say, is there anything else you want to criticize or <laughs> any of my tastes while you're at it? <laughs> I think I don't really consider any of the drive throughs like KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, all like that as quote unquote good food. I literally just think it's 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 filling food. <laughs> Not really. It fills the it fills the tank for me. It, it I was like it fills my tank. McDonald's my belly stops a... crying at me and saying, fat, fill me up, fat boy. And I'm just like, let's get out of it. <laughs> McDonald's is the kind of thing I get like once every couple of months and then regret okay. it as soon as I've had it. Because I'm like, why did I? Why? When I could have had 
like all of these other options did I choose McDonald's KFC I just enjoy their chicken like Burger King's alright but I don't know like I don't I tend to avoid if it, if a place is like like what I just said about McDonald's is like I tend to avoid it if I don't like enjoy it I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good good advice good advice very good advice fun fact or a story for kfc i had years ago sure. when both me and my partner were in a living our own place years ago in our own flat we said oh well, this was even before we went like uh, vegetarian slash vegan type of things and everything like that so we were still meat eaters and we thought let's go and have a kfc so i went to, so we went to go and get a kfc just finished work uh, we went, went and get a KFC, KFC, pulled into the driveway and everything like that. No one there, thank God. <sighs> Thinking in and out type of thing like that. And we got there and, it, and we said, hello, we would like to order this chicken, chicken, chicken. And the, literally the person replied said, I'm sorry, we have no chicken. And I went, what do you mean you have no chicken? That's all you sell is chicken. <laughs> I remember that, that happened. Beans? <laughs> Oh, no, no, we don't have chicken on the bone. You really need to word your sentences better next time. <laughs> I remember when that was a big thing. And, like, someone called up, like, because there was, like, a thing and, like, KFC didn't get the deliveries. With them. And someone, I remember reading, someone called the police. Because <laughs> we were like, we didn't have any chicken. That wasn't you, was it? <laughs> this was way before that. Oh. Yeah, this was years before that. Yeah, yeah. No, but it was really funny. I've been there where it's like you go in and you yeah. and you like go on some chicken and they're like we ain't got any chicken. <laughs> That's like, what you sell. <laughs> there was there was another time I went in, um, and they and they were like, well I can't remember how long it was, but it was like there was like people in there and there was a queue, and they were like yeah it's gonna be like. 50 minutes for chicken and i was like 50 fucking minutes <laughs> you are literally a drive through for in and a, out <laughs> for, for 50 minutes i might as well just you know order in <laughs> like probably yeah. i've come all the way here for because i because I, I had a craving for chicken and you tell me it's gonna be like an hour um, i'm good i'll i'll go and order a pizza or something with chicken on it <laughs> barbecue chicken mm. barbecue chicken pizza mm-hmm. <clears throat> So I'm sure everyone's also wanting to know the incredible adventures of me going to the cinema and if I walked out of the cinema <laughs> of Doctor Strange. No, I did not, everybody. I saw it. I saw the Avatar 2 teaser trailer. I won't lie. I had some tears in my eyes. Nice. It was beautiful, then. And then when I got home, I realized the bastards released it online. <laughs> Wild that they would release an advert designed to get people to come and see their movie in as many places as possible. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, I, oh, I was just thinking, I get to watch it again, but on repeats. Yeah. And we just got a brand new TV. So I was just like, Riffy, Riffy, Riffy. <laughs> While tears is just coming out my eyes with happiness, yeah. But no, yeah, yeah. I I can't wait for that movie and me uh, or whatsoever. Fine. Like, oh, it's like it's. Uh, I like it when I saw. It, I was just my words were, it is actually real. <laughs> it's not gonna get. Well, it might get delayed again, but we've seen it. It is actually real. They've actually filmed. Oh footage. There's actually filming. They've filmed something. <laughs> Yeah, there was actual scenes and everything. God. It's not James Cameron just staying down in the under the water, which is actually not a bad idea, James Cameron. Have you seen what's on the surface these days? I would stay under the water as well, sir. <coughs> yep. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about some of that. Um, <laughs> no, that's cool. Like I, I've watched a lot actually. Like for me, for me, yeah, I've actually watched watched you have? quite yeah. a bit this week because I watched. So I found a new YouTuber who reviews Star Trek stuff. Um, yeah, I, called, saw, I saw that thing on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> I got a, a mildly popular tweet. <laughs> um, Jesse Gender. Like, I just appreciate it. Like, I wanted to watch a Star, a Star Trek <laughs> Picard season two review, right? I like watching reviews of things after I've played and watched them, done my own review, whatever. And like, but like, like you go on YouTube and everybody's just like, ah, this is the worst. Star Trek is ruined. The franchise is over. It's like, I just want someone to talk, talk to me. (laughs) 
like in a nuanced way about Star Trek, and I f- and I found it. Jesse Gender like did like an hour long video about Star Trek Picard season two, and like without yeah. the 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 vitriol. Um, the some might say the the anger. The, yeah, yeah. Some might say some, might, some might say that. Um, so like yeah, like I've watched a bunch of their videos, and I was like, cool, this is cool. And then she mentioned in a in a video like she likes Star Trek Prodigy, so I was like, okay, well that's on uh, Now TV or whatever, Sky box sets or something. So fuck it, I'll give that a go. So I watched the whole thing like yesterday, and I was like, that was actually pretty good. Like, it wasn't groundbreaking, it wasn't amazing. It was just yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was a couple of really cool episodes and nice Star Trek. Especially with after after what happened with Picard season two, just having nice Star Trek this well, is like it's ten out of ten in itself. <laughs> well, <laughs> my VPN shenanigans, <laughs> shall we say, have given me ten out of ten Star Trek. Let's just put it that way. Um, I go off so far as to say 11 out of 10 and I never do 11 out of 10 because I think Ryu scores a dub in the first place <laughs> I know, you know, I know, I know but I've seen some Star Trek in the past week which is like back on the Star Trek oh binge my God, I kind of like it it's so good <laughs> it is good, like, there's no doubt about no, it the, the, thing I'm ta- the thing I'm talking about and, um I can't think of the word I'm trying to think of. Thanks, COVID. Um, I think I'm being like mysterious about that I've watched. It's so good. Oh my god. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about now. My brain was just like, yes. "What's she talking about?" I'm sure she's told me, but the. I did. Oh yeah, she has. Yeah, yeah, I have. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have. You do like. People, you like you. Tons of YouTube channels get sponsored by VPNs. You're not <laughs> you're saying you do a VPN and everything like that. It's not dubbed as piracy. Know, but not, but no like one. That. So here's the thing, man. This is the thing about having friends who listen to this podcast who live in the UK and don't use VPNs. They ain't seen it. <laughs> you ain't seen it. <laughs> well, I can. I can. So That's I'm sitting problem. here being very, very. I'm sitting here being very coy about it, but out of respect. Cool. Like cool. the statute of liberty, limitations to spoilers hasn't even started yet for people in the UK. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But let's get onto something that about a person who hasn't seen something because I saw all of this on Twitter. My phone was going crazy when I looked at it. I was saying, "What the hell's happened? And why am I getting a lot of replies on Twitter?" Phil, Phil, Alanius, we need to talk, sir. We we need to talk. Like legit, you haven't. Seen the greatest horror sci-fi movie of all time in this... Alien, and you haven't seen the greatest action sci-fi horror sequel of all time in Aliens. Who are you, sir? We did this Who last year. Are you? I know, but I'm doing it again. <laughs> you still haven't seen it? Who are you? Like I said to him on Twitter, I can't I don't... wait to find you in the middle again because I'm going to stab you in Among Us. <laughs> better, be, better put that in there. <laughs> um, like I got no problem with people not watching stuff, but like when it's like, it's like it's he'd love the film, so yeah. it upsets me that he hasn't seen it. And like he goes, like his thing is like he's got this thing where he's like, well, I've got to watch all of it. Like, if I'm going to start something, I've got to watch all of it. Um, there's, like, six films. <laughs> I mean, a considerable time sync? Yeah, sure. But not like... It's not like I'm saying, hey, you should watch the MCU with, like, 30 films and constant ongoing TV shows. I'm asking... I'm just saying, you should watch, you should watch two films, and then what you do after that is up to you. <laughs> yeah. The thing is... He would have got through the MCU faster knowing him. <laughs> With how long he takes. But no, yeah, Phil, 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 Phil. I, I own them all. I will happily lend you an account I have if you want to watch them all, sir. Heck, I will lend you my, uh, 
Yes, my accounts. I have accounts. Subscriber accounts. I will lend you them if you want to watch them. Really, it's, Even the other three you want to watch, I have them all. It's a waste of... It's it's a, he's a lot... It, like, in terms of recommending things to him, he's a, he's a lost cause. Like This is what we're going to do, him. We're going to say we're coming up to watch the British Grand Prix film. We ain't going to watch the British Grand Prix film. <laughs> we're saying he's doing shit. I don't want to watch it this year. <laughs> But man, just right. I had to right to get him to watch The Office, which he consider, which he now considered the American Office, which he now considers one of his favorite TV shows of all time. I had to literally put Netflix on on my phone while we were together during lockdown and literally hold the phone up in front of him <laughs> with the first episode playing. That's just how, and I and I kind of respect it, like in one way. Like, but this is how hard you have to work to get Phil to watch something. Like, regardless of whether you think he would love it, regardless of whether you know for a fact that he would yeah, love it, yeah, like, yeah. he'll just, the, the recommendation is just bounce off of him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless you, Phil. I still love you, Phil, but goddamn. It's, uh, goddamn <laughs> it's been a year, man, like. It's been a year. I've yeah. watched. I've we watched had this conversation. Yeah, we've had a poll up on Twitter and everything. Like, it, ah, oh, man. Like, I've I've watched six movies in that time, and I don't watch movies. <laughs> you watch movies all the time. What's going on, Phil? Think of six movies that you didn't like, and you could have spent that time watching the Alien franchise, and in fairness, you probably won't like some of those films. But the first two are like going to be like your favourite films. I think he will enjoy even the third one if he watches the special edition of the third one. Yeah, so I think the special edition of the third one is a far superior movie to the original version okay. of it. Alien Resurrection, just avoid what? that like the plague. Yeah, 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 <laughs> all right. I mean, he's going to watch it, which is fine. But like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I remember there was this thing with Keith when... Um, um, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children came out, and he he refused point blank to watch it for for like couple of, it was a few two or three years I think it was before we we managed to get him to watch it because the Final Fantasy film you remember the the actual like cinematic release film yeah that one like he didn't like he like he thought that was a bad film so he thought that so he wasn't gonna watch Advent Children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love, and I was I like, love that and to my to 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 my response to that was, how did you make it to Wrath of Khan? <laughs> because by that logic, <laughs> but, yeah, motion picture is a it's, bit slow. It's, it's incredible, but like things, like things can be of varying qualities. <laughs> like I don't know, man. Like this one was and bad, so therefore and everything that's sequel to the filler, the game, <clears throat> yeah. Like, this I can understand why he didn't like the spirit, the spirit within, because it's a separate own thing and everything. This is literally a sequel to one of the, uh, quote, quote unquote one of the best RPGs out there. It was just the logic of it that really like blew my mind. It was like this one was bad, so therefore all of the other ones are going to be bad. Like that's not how life works. Sorry, and I just the, I couldn't. It's not how the force works. Phil, it really isn't. <laughs> and yeah, Keith, Phil, I mean, yeah, Phil as well. Phil and Keith. Both of That's not how the fast works, guys. Like, anyway, I tweeted it. after a long Twitter Twitter conversation with Phil. I literally tweeted at him. Here's a wild suggestion. What if you just watch one and then see what you think of it? Because <laughs> that's that's what I do. <laughs> then you'll know. If I'd have watched Star Trek Prodigy, and I'd have been like, "Hey, you know what? I'm not really digging this. I'd have just stop watching it. Like, I don't <clears throat> have that compulsion to continue to watch things that I don't like." Yeah, that's true. And I didn't even get to mention the fact that I watched The Suicide Squad and it was fucking amazing. Oh, uh, what? The uh, James Gunn's? Yes. Oh, yeah, that was that is a, is amazing film. It's a it's fucking like amazing film. <laughs> it really is, yeah. It's so James Gunn, it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, I've been, like, waiting for it to come down in price and come down in price and come down in price and then I got so like, for a rental, because the rentals are, like, 15 quid. Um, what? Yes, because it's on Sky Cinema. Well, you would have don't you have an Amazon Prime account? Yeah, you probably so, would have been renting. You've been able to rent it on that. Just go on a Prime Video. Quid. Yeah, it's it's like on, 14, 15 quid to rent everywhere. On there. <laughs> wow. 
I've got an the app. Prices have shot up. No, 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 no. Like it's just it's it. There are certain HBO Max films that you can't mm. rent mm. for that. Like for like the normal like three fifty, four fifty, mm. because they're on Sky Cinema. Mm. I'm getting sick of this fucking bullshit of all the things we have to of, of suddenly having to wait for all the things again in the UK. Like this is starting to become a bullshit. I, w- I want to watch Our Flag Means Death because everybody tells me that's a fucking great show, and from everything I've heard about that show, I would really like it. But because it's on HBO <laughs> Max, <laughs> it's not in the UK. Like what the fuck is this? The late nineties? We're not doing this again. We have to wait fucking six months for a TV show to come to the fucking UK from America. Like. Do you know how many spoilers? Like, you can't avoid spoilers. <laughs> it's 2022. You could, you could then. That's the thing about yeah, it. Yeah, you, you, you don't realise just... that. <laughs> like, you follow, like, you follow, like, a fun, st- like, for example, a fun Star Trek account, and it starts fucking tweeting shit about, like, like gifts and stuff from Strange New Worlds, and it's like, ah, I can't watch that yet. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Rant over. Let's start the show. This is the Words About Games podcast. Every Monday, you can get a video version of the show on youtube.com slash words about games UK or an audio version on a variety of platforms, including Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. There are timestamps in the description wherever you choose to get your podcast so you can see what we've been chatting about. You can skip around or you can watch the entire podcast and backwards if you like. We don't mind. We're just happy that you're here. Uh, if you'd like to support the show or our content directly, you can buy us a coffee over at coffee.com slash words about games. Lastly, if you want to hang out with us while we play some games, head over to twitch.tv slash words about games. And if you want to hear us talk about and review some games, we publish reviews on the YouTube channel. Diverse. We try, we try to. Diverse channels. You Well. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, but yeah, like we've diversified it. On multiple channels, we don't not not all our eggs are in one basket. It's how we like it around here. We like eggs. I like eggs. Eggs are good. I like eggs as well. Scrambled, poached, mm. omelet. Mm. All right, yeah, I'm all right. I'm not too great. Right. Fried if I'm if I'm putting it on toast, right? Like I like a fried egg on toast, but interesting. Never tried it that way. Well, like depending on how you make the egg, the egg is like the perfect shape for the for the yeah. toast. So like you get like the egg like covering the entire like piece of bread. Yeah. I'm loving the fact that we have I and I have another clip to put on Twitter of us talking about food again. <laughs> it's gonna be it. Every time every time it's me and you on the podcast, there's gonna be like a sixty second clip on Twitter of just deep dive into some food. <laughs> You, you have two, really. That's the words yeah, about see, games, man. Like <laughs> Last week was potato skins. This week it's eggs. <laughs> All right, let's get into the news. So that you might have heard, if you're around the video game industry, that there was an email sent out by PlayStation's president, Jim Ryan, um, about... Uh, the stuff we talked about last week, Roe v. Wade. Um, we are going to talk about it next week's podcast for a variety of reasons. Um, I didn't, but I wanted to mention like it in the top of the podcast to just say yes, yes, I did see it. I have thoughts. Um, they're all jumbled up in my head, <laughs> um, and it's a lot of screaming. So I'm gonna we're gonna talk about it on next week's podcast. Plus, I kind of want to see what how they try to walk that one back. Um, but it'll probably I say that and it'll probably just be like some kind of milk toast non apology. Um, I think they have like a copy paste template. But just to let everybody know right off the bat, it's not here. We're doing it next week. We're gonna move on to talk about Xbox. I got my Xbox expert. If you like that, Xbox expert. Alliteration. Because <laughs> expert is starts with an X for the extra like nineties attitude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Phil Spencer says Xbox needs to work better to meet expectations after Starfield delay. This is from George Foster over at the Gamer. He writes 
Xbox CEO Phil Spencer has said that the studio needs to, quote, work to better meet, end quote, expectations following the delay of Starfield and Redfall. Yesterday, a bombshell was dropped on gamers as Bethesda announced that it was delaying two of its biggest titles, Redfall and Starfield, which were scheduled for summer and winter of this year, respectively. Bethesda Game Studios and Arcane Austin both released statements on the delay, thanking fans for the support and promising more news soon. Now, Xbox CEO Phil Spencer has released his own statement on the delay of Starfield and Redfall, admitting that the decision was a difficult one and that Xbox needs to work towards better meeting expectations that it sets in the future. Spencer said, quote, These decisions are hard on teams making the games and our fans. While I fully support giving teams time to release these great games when they are ready, we hear the feedback. Delivering quality and consistency is expected. We will continue to work better to meet those expectations, end quote. Previously, Starfield had been planned for release on November 11th of this year, while Redfall was planned for a summer release, although it wasn't given a specific release date. So Star- Starfield and Redfall both got delayed, um, and then I saw this news article while I was skimming the sites looking for looking for stories for the podcast, and I thought, well, why not bring this article as the one to talk about the delay, because it's the delay plus some stuff that Phil said, which is... Um, well, let's talk about it. Well, one person has been kind of hinting that, that they don't didn't believe Starfield would land, and you were worse spot on, Amy. Starfield has obviously been delayed. In From the like studio that. that brought you Elder Scrolls. I don't know. I just had a feeling. You know, you just have a feeling, right? <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. I think if the pandemic never happened, the date would have been landed. There's no doubt about that, personally. Uh, but I, I think, think yeah, people... oh man, imagine if the pandemic had never happened. Like, what would, like, the games released in 2020, 2021, and 2022, like, Look that would like. be, that would have been fascinating, right? Like, that would have been massively What would we have already so. played? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I think people keep forgetting clearly that there's a <laughs> pandemic still depend. going on. And, uh, <laughs> even though the video game industry profitably profited incredibly well because of the pandemic because everyone was inside with money and they spent it <laughs> to on their oh, games yeah. and everything um on the games for 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 the industry and whatnot and obviously then when the consoles came out new consoles came out when they could get them they bought them instantly and everything yes. so we had also like i said but we also got to realize not many games really came out uh, a um, lot of them were delayed. Like Nintendo haven't ha- didn't have a big game come out for the rest of the first year of the pandemic after um, Animal around- Crossing. Animal Crossing came out, and then obviously it's starting to slowly bring out stuff now, but it's still lacking it behind because like, Zelda was pushed till next year as well. And yeah, yeah, man, like it's a whole thing, and it's like there's a lot of things that are still going on that that where it comes to crunch. And I think uh, Jason Jason Snyder's tweet that he put out that I put in our Discord, I think that kind of is kind of revealing itself that Bethesda developers really themselves when they found out what the date was going to be, what they revealed last year, E3 or whatever it was. It was E3 E3 last year. Yeah, they were like. I don't think we're gonna hit this day. Are you crazy? Type of thing, and it's just like when you hear when you hear that, and you're thinking, "Oh, okay. Oh, that's bad." Because I don't know if this is the first time Jason has revealed this, or if it was the second time or whatever about that tweet. No, it but probably yeah. sounds familiar because that's it what happened to Cyberpunk. Um, oh, yeah. The Cyberpunk postmortem that he did, and one of the yeah. empl- one of the people here he spoke to, literally said more or less that same thing. Where it was like when they revealed the release date, everybody at the studio went, "I don't know how we're going to do that," and they kept pushing it back and pushing it back, all for one. No, year this this was actually- yeah, no, this was the release date for that it actually came out on when it was um, released. Yeah, and yeah, it's just like a whole it's a whole thing when it comes to this industry right now. We're all catching up still. In many many ways in many many different styles and whatnot and it's just gonna it's gonna be one of those continuous things and nobody and i do mean no studio publisher wants to be the next cyberpunk at all nope. so them pushing it is the smartest thing ever uh redfall like when you don't even see anything for for the game except a cgi trailer when they revealed it, it's coming out next year like the, when they revealed it last year i was like i was kind of skeptical on Redfall myself for instantly for that one but starfield yo this is your brand new ip it's massive apparently 
what everyone's saying about it. Uh, for who, but you got to remember, it, it's like for as big as Skyrim was, like that game came out eleven years ago. So this is like because it, it, it's it's by the same studio, right? So it, like it's a sci-fi RPG, but in in terms of like development, it's like it's Skyrim, but eleven years, twelve years later. Um, yeah. By the time it comes out, so like the the improvements and the whatever they do to it, like it's going to be a massive game. Yeah, it's going absolutely massive. But don't worry, Xbox gamers. That just means you get another Skyrim re-release later this year. Yep. <laughs> I'm jesting. I am jesting about that. I'm not. Um, when, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to Phil's statement saying we need to work better on meeting expectations. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But Phil, you're not the only studio. You're not the only publisher. The company I work for are the same. So does Nintendo. So is Ubisoft. And, totally... EA, and everybody. Everyone does this. You're not the only one about oh it. The yeah. only thing about the only thing that I think what what where you where yes, no doubt about it, you need to meet you need to work to meet better better meet expectations. It also would help that maybe the social media calms the fuck down when a game is is pushed back doesn't go oh my god what are we gonna play at the end of the year oh my god what am i gonna play you're gonna post play call of duty man <laughs> the numbers tell us <laughs> it's probably gonna be it's call probably of call of duty <laughs> yeah or fifa or the last or, or the last FIFA's fifa called the last fifa year. it's the last fifa this year yeah 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 and so then and then the, the hell down <laughs> I've got thoughts on that, like name change. I, I think, I think, uh, but it, I don't want to talk about that. The like on your point about Redfall, it's like that. Like I said last year when we talked about it, like I don't mind a game being announced with a CGI trailer, like a good CGI trailer, um, or if you're just doing like a hey, remember this game exists trailer. But like, there is a path from that to releasing a game less than a year later, where it's like CGI trailer, do this, and then you hit this, and then Game Awards, you do this, and then. We show off this and stuff, but like, yeah, when nothing came out of the game awards and then it became 2022 and still nothing was coming out, I was like, <laughs> it's like, oh, well, it's, I guess, I guess I'm not playing this this summer. Like, <laughs> and it's yeah. fine. It's whatever. Like, I don't really, I don't really mind. Like, I just played, um, like three back-to-back -back game pass games <laughs> on a, on my xbox and or pc because you know game pass is ultimate also on pc so i'm like everybody seems to be like predicting like doom and apocalypse for like pc for, uh, for xbox for the rest of 2022 and i'm just like i just played potentially a game of the air contender like on on game pass for me so i'm just like mm, it's cool i'm fine like <laughs> like i'm sure there will be games to play on xbox like throughout the year like is it bad that there might not be an xbox game studios game that comes out for the rest of 2022 i mean it's not great but i'm sure there's i'm sure they've got something coming out this is just bethesda games mm. we have like not none of this is the yeah. xbox game studio stuff and yeah. if nothing comes out okay they'll still be fine they, they had a so they had a slow first party yeah like when PS4 launched in 2013, you you barely got any mm, good. No, good isn't the right word. Like any games that were were particularly well liked by a lot of people, like as first party exclusives, until 2015 when Bloodborne came out. So like, and PlayStation 4 is one of the best selling consoles of all time. So I think <clears throat> it doesn't matter as much as I think a lot of people think. Like. As long as there are games to play on the console, regardless of whether they are Xbox first-party games or Xbox uh, second or third-party exclusives or just, just third-party exclusives, they'll be fine. Yeah, no doubt about it, yeah. I think the, the thing is about it is that when people say there's going to be no games, it's just like, that, that's not what they're saying. They're saying there's not going to be any AAA games to big AAA games to play at the end of the year. And I was thinking, no, there's still going to be that. It's just not going to be exclusive to like a one party studio like Microsoft or for PlayStation or Nintendo. That's it. You can, it's still going to well, be fine. <laughs> okay. So let me, let me spin this around. 
what is going to be I don't know, right what is going to be the big th- the big first party PlayStation exclusive at the end of the year and you're going to say God of War and I'm going to say well let's say God let's make a hypothetical that God of War gets delayed and and is that going to matter like if God of War is delayed which you know I highly believe it will be um like and and then nothing replaces it like in terms of like something being a big blockbuster AAA exclusive for PlayStation Five, like <clears throat> nobody would mind. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. It matters for Xbox because I don't know. I guess people like to talk shit about Xbox. I don't know. <laughs> I've never been in the mindset of talking shit about consoles because of the games that come out on them. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Microsoft gets a lot of shit for no reason at all when they reveal when they reveal when like like Game Pass is. It's a masterstroke. It's one of the best things out there, and they should be praised for that. But they barely get praised for that as well. But they get bashed on a lot, which is very, like, it is very much very unfair. And you're right. If God of War Ragnarok does get delayed, um, which I agree would not be a surprise whatsoever, um, PlayStation fans always will go, Ugh! but they'll also be like, "Take your time. It's fine. I'm annoyed, but take your time." Type of thing. And it's just like, get the fuck. I'm just, I'm saying like this now. I'll say this for the Nintendo fans who cried over Zelda. Get the fuck over yourself. Like, seriously. People, like, the, the companies have made a decision here. At the end of the day, if Bethesda wanted, if Microsoft and Bethesda wanted to release Starfield this year, they could do that. They could still do that. There'd be a difference, though. There'll be a massive fucking article coming out wait, about a month or so before the game's about to come out, or about two months after the game's released, saying the amount of crunch and unhealthy lifestyle the studio and the team have had to live on to get this game done. I'm no offense, I'm still, I, I will not be surprised if we hear that soon for 343 Studios, because I still say Halo should have been delayed till this year and everything like that. And I'm not going to lie. I think they're thinking they should have delayed it till next year as well. There's no one no with what's happened with Starfield and Redfall and everything. But that's I digress here. Plus, plus, on top of the article, Starfield would have probably been fucking Cyberpunk too. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. No one wants to be the second Cyberpunk whatsoever. Every studio's get Every studio's been very, very skeptical. Been very, very... Tippy tippy when it comes to the release dates. Yes, are they putting release dates down and they shouldn't really do that when they know potentially they might not hit that release date? Yes, they should not do that at all. Round these parts, we just call that doing a PlayStation. It's funny because it's true. The funny thing is, though, when it came to like the release of the PlayStation 5, PlayStation wouldn't put a date on any of their games. Like, everyone was wondering, is any game going to come with this console? We have a release date for the console, but we don't have any games for this year. And then they eventually revealed Demon's Day uh, and obviously Miles Morales and everything. Demon Souls, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like Demon Souls. <laughs> it's like what the hell, guys? You weird. You were like, can we actually get these done while we're in the midst of a fucking pandemic right now? And they were like, yeah, I don't know, but we're gonna, we're just gonna. And they eventually Fine realized th- they're gonna go gold, guys. We can put a deal out. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, like it's nothing. Delays are fine. Yes, friends are spot on. Meet the expect they do need to better need to meet better better meet their expectations, but also people need to allow expectations to fail. Cause well, there's nothing wrong with failure. <laughs> there's a rock and a hard place argument to be made about like this kind of oh, situation hell. because like they could not date or like <laughs> they could not say Starfield's coming out November eleventh, twenty twenty two, and Redfall's coming out summer twenty twenty two. You could they could not say that, which like. I think is the I better agree. option. Like for yeah, me personally, I think that's the better option. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the conversations that are happening now around Xbox and like, oh, Xbox is fucked this uh, they, for 2022. Like it's going to be terrible. Like they would have happened last year and continued to happen all the way through because everybody would be like, well, what are we going to fucking play on our Xbox? Like, so for, from an Xbox perspective, or a PlayStation or a Nintendo perspective, like for for anyone who's like releasing games, it's like they have to they have to put these windows and dates on them to steer the conversation away from stuff like what we're seeing right now. Whereas, like, if everybody just took a chill pill and like <laughs> like what didn't do monger every single time, like there was a gap in the release window for a console or a platform or a publisher, uh, and just let the teams and 
the development teams just get on with it and the game will be ready when it's ready. I think that would be a better, better scenario. Like, I, it's a scenario I would prefer. Like, I was looking forward to playing Redfall. I'm a bit disappointed that it's not coming out anytime soon. Like, you know, no. being being as it, it is pretty much summer now. So it's like, oh, Redfall, cool. Redfall's soon and now it's not. And it's fine. Delay the game. Work on it for however long you got to work on it. But, like, just, if you just not said summer 2022, it would have been one of those things. <clears throat> like, I have this, like, I call it my queuing system. <laughs> in my brain where it's like the closer a game is the more i'll think about it so like yeah. something like um oh god like something that's like not coming out for ages will go to the back of that queue every now and again i might remember it exists and go oh yeah that thing like alan wake 2 is coming out next year air quotes um and i'm just like cool so that's like every now and again i'll think about it and go fuck yeah alan wake 2 is coming out next year whereas like something like that's coming out in the next month i'll be like starting to get excited for that you know yeah <laughs> and it yeah, doesn't bother me that alan wake 2 is so far down the road <laughs> yeah i think right now i think it's a lot of people just like what have we got to play later this year and everything like that and like well part a takeaway from take away fifa call of duty and all the other like big games that come out law was always annually for the la- end of the year and everything like that um i do understand where they're coming from, but they're also at the same time they, they are in the sphere, the sphere like what you and me are. We know that are games that are coming out um, that are reportedly going to be coming out later this year. So sure, sure. Add that in that part. Maybe, like, maybe not, etc. Like, etc. Et yeah. Like, I do get it this year more than most years because we, we have a Google calendar where we keep track of all of the releases for games and like even though it's May, now with Starfield being delayed as well and Stalker 2 potentially we don't really know what's going on with that game at the moment, understandably so because the developer was based in Ukraine um, like it's pretty bare like apart from like you know right you can is, you yeah. can theory craft and say like cards coming out and some other stuff's coming out that we know is going to come out at the end of the year <clears> or towards the end of the year but like even for like where we are right now we, we usually know more about games that are coming out in the last part of the year like it's it's a strange it is a strange situation but hey you know what if let it be the fucking let it be the holiday season of indie games <laughs> i'll take that that would be amazing <laughs> i agree like indie games like i just <clears throat> smashed out three games this week were all indie games and i was so happy about it. i had so much fun playing them so like fantastic Hell yeah! I'm on. I was on Itchy. I looking at games. Um, like oh, I played it. Um, such underrated chat. Like, uh, I played a, a game jam game, like a half an hour thing, and I was just like, "Oh, this is this is a really cool idea!" Like I've made a video for it coming out See, later this week. See what can get done in five days. Yeah, it was a, less, It was amazing. three three day game jam, um, oh. and like the concept of it was cool and it was fun and it was like half an hour long and like I'm looking at other games where it's just like you know what like. I'm diversifying the games that I play and talk about on YouTube, and it's great. Like, I've skipped so many AAA games this year, and I feel fine. <laughs> Hell yeah. Better than yeah, fine. Like, like, I feel no, more excited yeah. about games because I'm playing the ones that I want to play. And, like, if 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 you want to play, like, if you're really excited about all of the big AAA releases, there's more power to you. Like, that's cool, and you do you, and I'll do me. But, like, man, like, go play some indie games, though, because... They're fucking cool. <laughs> I I haven't made the video yet. Um, I'm making it late, like um, next for for next week. But like, I just played Citizen Sleeper on Game Pass, and like, it might be might in in terms of like game of the year, which you know I'm not really concretely thinking about until December. But like, it might be better than Elden Ring. <laughs> in in my in my thinking by december like i'm i'm just like damn this was this was a special experience like i can understand if you have a special experience yeah it's a game that such a good always, game yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah yeah no like i always think take your time like what i hope is because we're seeing a lot of delays or a lot of games taking longer than we would normally have expected a few years ago to come out my hope what my hope is like the push that we've had for the last few years of can we stop fucking torturing workers to get games out as fast as possible is actually making an impact on some studios and they're pushing their games so they're not crunching their staff. That's what I hope. Whether that's the case or not, I imagine I'll probably be disappointed. <clears throat> but one could live in hope. 
Telephonic, if even if just one studio delays their game so they don't crunch their workers, I'll take it. Yeah, that's true. Positive impact. Um anyway, speaking of positive impacts, let's talk about that Unreal Engine 5 train station demo because oh my god. <laughs> pretty special it's isn't fucking it? ridiculous holy yeah. shit um yeah they came up with my twitter feed out uh, just random one random day and i was like what am i looking at like because you know the video is like auto play <clears throat> and i don't know if you if you scroll if you're scrolling twitter like if a video starts auto playing i generally look at the video before i look at the tweet <laughs> um and it caught my attention because like oh this is weird like what is this and i was just watching it and i was like wait what is this and then i looked at the tweet and i was like this is a game <laughs> Oh, a, a demo like a tech demo it's like this is gameplay what the fuck <laughs> that is literally the quote pun not intended was literally unreal when i said when i saw this thing it was like what the hell this is insane uh, it's no one no wonder playstation have been putting in a lot of money into uh epic and unreal basically <laughs> obviously they've got a partnership and whatnot so I'm just like, yeah, I'm not surprised here. Yeah, it is a big leap forward. Right now. It, imagine what things are going to look later on. Like we thought that we thought Unreal looked brilliant. Unreal, 5, yeah, because we saw that demo reveal. last. Was it last year? Yeah, with the, I think the so. turn and going through the the tomb or whatever it was in the desert with yeah. That was a demo. Well, I think Mooney's Mooney's internet dropped out. Oh, that is really surprised. <laughs> Actually, it looks kind of concerned. It's fine. We're back. <laughs> uh, yeah. The demo looks great. Yeah, no. Um, I would like to officially announce my retirement from playing horror games. <laughs> Once Unreal 5 comes out, because there's no way. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Like, That's too realistic. I can't. I can't play games that look like that, which also have scary monsters in them. Are you kidding? The thing is that <laughs> Unreal 5 is out. Studios have it. Oh, yes, I know, Moody, but there's no games out with Unreal that use Unreal 5 to its maximum potential right now. Stop being a pedant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Unreal 5 is out. All right, then. Give me the game, then. Give me the game that I can play on, Real, on, on Unreal Engine 5. That's not what you said. Oh, what's that? You can't? Oh, okay. Said, that's not what you Jog said, on. Amy. Jog on. <laughs> you, you jog know, on. You know what? The, after this podcast, you're fired. <laughs> you're not coming back <laughs> for at least, I don't know, three weeks, and then we'll see it. We'll talk about it. We'll see, see how we feel. <laughs> um, the tech demo is very impressive, but what I would... Yeah. It does yeah, look yeah. incredible, and games that are on Unreal Engine 5 will look incredible, but what I always like to remind people whenever tech demos come out is games won't look like this straight away, because... Like, it's one scene rendered with nothing happening in it. And that video games generally tend to have things happening in them. <laughs> For a thing that had nothing happening in it, it made me poop myself a bit. I know, it's very eerie, wasn't it, when the lights went out? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, it, it's a thing. Like, they'll still, the games will still look amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I'm, I'm counteracting the... Whatever game comes out first on Unreal Engine 5 that we play on PS5 or whatever. Yeah, like, probably won't look like that. Yeah. There'll, be, there'll be all of the people going, oh, it's been downgraded. <laughs> this deck demo was a lie. <laughs> look at the puddles. Greatest meme ever when they return back to it. <laughs> you complaining about our puddles? Fine! <laughs> I don't see as much of that anymore these days, the whole, like, downgrading yeah. thing. Like, it's nice to, like... I'd like to think they've all crawled in their holes and, and gone away, but now they probably just shout about women and black people in video games. Not gay people. Not, yeah. 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 <laughs> Any marginalised yeah. person who actually happens to be near a not video a, game. <laughs> and not be a pasty white dude. Yeah, yeah basically. Uh, speaking of pasty white dudes, that was intentionally the best segue we could have possibly had. Activision Blizzard brags about diversity tool, dials things down after backlash. This is from Justin Reeve over at The Gamer. He writes, Activision Blizzard King recently boasted about using a diversity tool to create characters, referring specifically to Call of Duty Vanguard and the upcoming Overwatch 2. 
The tool seems to have been created to rate characters according to a series of guidelines including age and gender, establishing what many critics have been referring to as a diversity index. The company has now been dialing things down. The tool was apparently created to avoid, quote, token characters in favour of true representation, end quote. According to the company, the tool was able to uncover examples of unconscious bias, like, quote, why certain traits are seen as male versus female, or why characters from certain ethnic backgrounds are given similar personalities or behaviours. The company said in a statement, quote, Over the past few months, King has let developer teams at Activision and Blizzard beta test the diversity space tool, and the results have been immediate. End quote. This one... They went on to quote diversity, equity, and inclusion manager at Sledgehammer Games, Alania Cole, who described how the tool was used to quote, figure out what more diversity looks like across all of our characters in both campaign multiplayer and live seasons. Cole added that we're going to use that data going forward into the next games that we're working on, end quote. The statement finally noted how the Overwatch 2 team at Blizzard had also had a chance to experiment with the tool with equally enthusiastic first impressions. When the statement became known, the backlash quickly came from all sides, prompting Activision Blizzard King to walk back on many of its assertions. The company also removed any reference to the use of its diversity tool in active game development from the initial statement. Activision Blizzard King noted how there has been, quote, conversation online regarding the diversity space tool, particularly concerning its intent and our commitment to diversity, end quote. The statement was apparently modified in order to, quote, clarify that this prototype is not being used in active game development, end quote. The edited statement continues, quote, The objective of using the tool is to uncover unconscious bias by identifying existing norms in representation and acknowledging opportunities for growth and inclusion. It is not a substitute for any other essential effort by our teams in this regard, nor will it alter our company's diversity hiring goals, end quote. And then, you know, the rest about all the lawsuits. <laughs> Activision Blizzard's reputation at the moment. It's funny that this blog post came out right around the same time as there were news stories coming out about Activision Blizzard doing more union busting. I can't imagine that. It must have been a coincidence. It was a very funny evening when they released this, though. As everybody tried to wrap their heads around what they were looking at. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of trying to wrap this up. Yeah, you're right. I don't know, so I like, don't know anything about this. So I like, missed this, I think. Um... I did post it in the Discord, um, but Imran Khan said it was like, it was the first tweet I saw, the first thing I saw about it was Imran's tweet, where I was like, mm. I'm trying to read this blog post and my eyes keep sliding off of it. <laughs> um, and it looks, it's like, it's such a fucking weird, uh, weird thing, like to, to have to try and explain it. It was like, so employees at King, Activision Blizzard King, King is one of the the studios that they own. The Candy Crush guys. The Candy Crush and guys and gals and non-binary pals. Um, exactly. They they made a tool <laughs> that measures the diversity score of the characters. Characters based on like, I think it was like six um, criteria. So it was like age, gender, ethnicity, culture. And, and like the end result looks like a fucking, like, you know when you play like Madden <laughs> or like FIFA? <laughs> And you've got that that chart of like the stats of the different characters, and like, let me see, let me see if I can find. I need to find a picture of this. Um, Activision, I had just it'll be in the Discord actually. I would have thought uh, in the news dump diversity index that'll probably take me straight to it. And and like they used some Overwatch characters as examples, and it was like this whole thing of. Well, basically, what I just read, where it's like the they can use this tool to identify like with the characters, like you know, are stereotypical or like have biases depending on like their gender or ethnicity, or like you know, it's like it rates the characters in 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 these things, and like the the crux of it is like the the I imagine this is something that pissed everybody off because I imagine the 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 reactionaries were all like ah diversity forced you know the usual banter, but. On on my side of Twitter, everybody was just like, you could just hire diverse designers, like a diverse pool of designers, and then just talk to them about it, rather than like go through all the trouble of creating this index. Um, which is difficult to wrap your head around. Like, 
tweeted with a couple of people about it, like, and talked to a couple of people about it, and it was one of those things where, like, even, like, people whose job it is to, like, write and talk about the video game industry were having a hard time, like, figuring out what this tool was supposed to be for. Well, off the... Going on how uh, you've read it and explained it to me, it's basically, it's a make sure they're not being racist tool, basically. Are we making sure that we are diversifying our characters enough and making sure oh, here we that go. we are gender typical, uh, putting them in typical roles of what like happens in movies and everything like that? Like a person of colour is like a gangster or a rapper or something like that. <laughs> That'll lower the score. Yeah, um, and everything. Uh, or is, is the white person being the hero or something or what's always happens and everything. And is the female being put in distress or something like that? You know, it's, I think it's just something kind of like that. And it, So here's where Imran, Imran, Imran wrote some stuff that might make a bit more sense because this is the example. Um, so the idea of the post argues is, is to guard, quote, against unconscious bias and exclusion when it comes to the creation of their games and characters, end quote. These metrics list, listed are culture, race, age, cognitive ability, physical ability, body type, facial features, slash beauty, gender identity, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic background. Using Overwatch character Anna as the example, she has points in culture, race, age, physical ability, and gender identity. Essentially, the tool seems to start with the idea that a cis, heterosexual, white, male character is the default, and that factors away from that are essentially diversity points, which is mildly problematic, uh, which is a mildly problematic assumption to codify, even if it tra- if it tends to work out that way in practice. Ideally, decades of bad results should not create a default as much as there should be something that recognizes and ne- necessarily ubiquitous. So That's from Imran. When it comes to code in general, never ask code to try and be diverse <laughs> because it has no idea what the fuck you are talking about at the end of the day. Well, I might be wrong on that. Please, anyone who's a code genius or knows about code, please let me know and everything like that. Uh, but either way, yeah, this, um, I think what you're saying is just basically just spot on at the end of the day. Oh. Activision Blizzard, Activision Blizzard King, how about you just hire some diverse people who know, who can, and you can have a proper conversation with these people to, to point out and bring together a proper good collection of characters that don't, aren't uh, stereotypical uh, and, and and everything like that, just like, and you can put properly diversify them properly. Yeah. How about you just do that? It's a simple thing. Heck, freaking, I still stand by for like what place the uh, not PlayStation, Naughty Dog did when it came to the Last of Us Part Two. Like everyone, like when we when it was revealed that they had a trans character in there, they reve- they came out and said, we talked to people who were trans character people. <laughs> That would have not. That I'm not My saying God. that this. Uh, Mind blowing. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, if, if he came out and says we never spoke to a what trans a person whatsoever, they would have been perfectly right to being completely bashed. But they didn't. They did it right, and they spoke saying, "How can we do this right it's... without being offensive? Because we don't want to be offensive whatsoever, which is great to think. I mean, why would anyone want to be offensive? You look, look at the end of the day. If you want to create a black character, for example. I, and you, you, you know, you're in a game development studio, and you're like, we want to create a black character. And you look hire, like me. Hire That's some, uh, yeah. And you look like one of us. H- hire some black designers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hire some black people to help make that character. Um, because yeah, there is that problematic instance um, of like what this diversity chart actually does is it centers cis white straight male as default. Which is kind of a thing we've been trying to get away from in society in, in general. Like, you know, those of us who don't want to see society completely fucking burnt at the ground. Um, basically, anyone who isn't a Republican or a conservative. Um, like, and, like we, we need to stop positioning that as the default. And that's exactly what this tool does. It's like anything that is not that gets a point. And then you create a chart that looks like a fucking skill chart in Football Manager. Like... Probably take another swing at this one. Just saying. <laughs> it's yeah, fucking ridiculous, much. as Phil yeah, would say. <laughs> yeah, it's, the more you think about it, it literally is just like, it is the stupidest thing ever. And and instead of the idiots who come out and saying, oh, the forced representation and all like that, just shut the fuck up. Like, legit. 
Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Take just two of these. Go into your little corner. <laughs> go, just get yourself into a bin and throw yourself into the sea, okay? Yeah. And just, and just sw- and swim just off. Float away. Just float, float away. away. Yeah. Leave, leave float the rest away. of us. Leave the rest of us to... In to peace. try and survive. <laughs> to try and survive what's coming in peace, like please. Yeah, it's like like it's like seriously, man. Like there's nothing wrong with not, uh, there's nothing wrong with diversifying and represent represent having proper representation in any element. What's that reading? Job. Wait, is, did I put this in the tidbits? I think I might have forgot. I, I have something to follow that up on, and it's something that came out this week, and I forgot to put it in in the show. And I think I'm going to talk about it after halftime because it's <coughs> halftime, which means it's indie game of the week. I'm just making myself a little note to like continue the diversity talk. Um, and hopefully, I remember what that note is in a few minutes. <laughs> also, it looks like I've written it as a pirate because it's gone or. <laughs> Uh, it's Indie Game of the Week. This is the thing we do every week where we talk about one cool-looking indie game that's coming out that we might have forgotten all. Oh, man, my brain still hasn't recovered from COVID. It's it's really starting to concern me. Um, my fault. Hmm? My fault. Yeah, your fault. Um, yeah, it's Indie Game of the Week. This is the thing we do every week where we, we see a, a cool-looking indie game and we decide we want to talk about it because it looks cool and we think you should know about it so this week's indie game of the week is potionomics after the untimely death of her uncle in a a penniless witch named sylvia finds herself thrust into the role of potion proprietor it's all up to her to carry on her uncle's legacy and keep this keep his potion shop afloat thankfully she won't have to go it alone with help from some new friends sylvia must hone her negotiation skills outsell her craftiest competitors and make her shop the number one potion destination in rafter it's all about mastering the finer points of potionomics. Wheel and deal, negotiations can be tense when every coin counts, but you'll manage Sylvia's stress with ease by playing your cards right. Develop friendships with adventurers and other shopkeepers on Rafter to learn even more advanced negotiation tactics. Fantastic friends and foes, Rafter, home to some of the world's most potent magic, is packed with big RPG personalities, each seeking a leg up in their adventures. Befriend and recruit them to help you level up your own potion game, but don't expect everyone to be friendly. Your shop, your rules. Make your shop really pop with customizable decor. Style points aren't the only perk. Decorating your shop just right can improve your prices, make better quality potions, and more. Potionomics is being developed by Voracious Games and published by Exceed and Marvelous USA. It's coming fall 2022 to PC via Steam. There is a link in the description um, where you can click on it and go wishlist the game. We'll have a look at it uh, over on Steam. Um, Go, go, go. Do that. Go do that. It's a pretty cool looking game. Um, and I, I'm totally not looking for <laughs> something to read right now. The thing I was looking up this morning. Before. The thing that nobody wrote about. Thanks. That's probably why I forgot about it. Um, let me see if I can find the tweet that I saw. <laughs> that will have to Help do you. yes the, so there was a designer that put a tweet out on may 10th um it's loading at nora shramek um quote when i worked on star wars jedi fallen order a lot of devs wanted and advocated for the main character to be black and or a woman reasons for no we already have two black people in the game ray is a woman and we can't do that too. <laughs> and we can't do that too Guess what demographic of the people who are making those decisions look like, end quote. Um, there's, there's worse uh, in the next tweet. Quote, the worst thing I heard was when someone, not going to give any info here, said, I think all black people need to have more glossy skin because black people have more oily skin than other people. Dead shock on everyone's face. Looks at me, right, Nora? Me, what the fuck is wrong with you, end quote. So, like, it just tripped in my mind there when we were talking about the forced diversity thing. And um, where I remembered reading this <coughs> about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and then I remembered it was very recent. Um, like, there's not a fucking quarter <laughs> that you need to hit, right? It's like, you don't go, we're going to have one black protagonist, and we're going to have one female protagonist, and then we might have one gay protagonist. It's like, I just found that quote really funny in a terrible, ridiculous sort of way, where it's like, well, we can't have the main character of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 
to be black or a woman because we already have black characters and Rey already exists in Star Wars, the movies. That would be too many. <laughs> and that's nothing against uh, Kyle Kester, so the writing <clears throat> team at Respawn or the actor who played him because, you know, I like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Mm. Kyle was a fine character. I just find it really funny that, like, the argument back against making that character potentially black and or a woman was, no, we will have too many then. All right. Because <laughs> that's a <the> thing. <laughs> Apparently it is. Apparently that's a thing that exists. We can have too many. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Breathe. Breathe. Nah. I if I stop breathing, then I might die. And then I won't have to put up with any of this shit anymore. So there are, there are perks. Uh, yeah. Really? really? Well, at least pass out. And then I get a good night's sleep. <laughs> you know what time of year it is, though, Moody? It's the time of year where everybody does their end of year financial reports. So we get to talk about money. Money. Capitalism, your favorite thing. <clears throat> it's not capitalism. Well, it is capitalism. We don't talk it's about that. Part. Money. We don't talk about the money part. We talk about the. These are all of the games that we are planning to release in the financial quarter year of 2023, which ends in March for some reason. <laughs> because capitalism is stupid. It makes no April, sense. Why do April, you do April, April, April? January? Jan- I, I honestly it's, have no it's, idea. It's like, it's I, like there's already a calendar, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, why, <laughs> are you why? why would you change this? <laughs> I do agree with what you're saying there. I know. Um, yeah, so we got Nintendo. Nintendo lays out 2022 game release schedule. This is from Tom Phillips over at Eurogamer. He writes, Nintendo has set out its release schedule for the rest of 2022, which still lists Bayonetta 3 for launch this year. Other 2022 exclusives will include Ubisoft's Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope plus Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, specifically late 2022 for those. The sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is, as we already know, set for a spring 2023 launch. Nintendo published games with firmer release dates include Mario Strikers Battle League Football on June 10th, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes on June 24th, Square Enix's Live Alive on June tw- on July 22nd, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 on July 29th, and Splatoon 3 on September 9th. Two games are listed with a TBA date, Metroid Prime 4, whose whereabouts remain entirely unknown since Retro Studios rebooted its development, and Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, which Nintendo dramatically delayed until further notice due to Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine. And that's everything we know about Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, Still we could. Pokemon. That's all it matters. She, 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 it will come out. You just got to do the eyes every now and again. Just be like, yeah, sure it will, Mooney. Sure it will. <laughs> come, come out at the same time as Dino oh, I Crisis. Said it was still coming out. <laughs> come out the same time as Dino Crisis is fine. <laughs> I just said it was still coming out. Do you, like, yeah, so this is pretty much like they've just like laid out everything that we already knew. Um, yeah, 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 pretty much. Like, they're not going to re- reveal the release dates for Bayonetta 3 and Pokemon because that's what they're going to do next month. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, cool. all signs are pointing towards there being a direct in June, um, in- including and not limited to the previous direct, which lasted, which, which gave us information up until June. Um, do you think it's like they did that? It's like they planned it. It's like they planned it. Imagine planning things in advance. Um, I mean, that's a pretty like with with the addition of like you see the the games that have got released states. Then with the addition of Bayonetta three, Pokemon and Pokemon, um, like that's a pretty stacked year. Like irregardless, right? Of like Nintendo published games. Do you think they're gonna add anything to this? Like Probably in the summer, like we're gonna see like anything More get added games. to it maybe that hollow night thing will be coming at last we don't talk about hollow night around here we don't talk about that okay sorry, sorry. no um <laughs> uh then probably not like pokemon's gonna be absolutely massive at the end of the day for them That's true uh you uh mario and rabbits the first one was a very big success for them and if this one is just as half as good as the first one was they'll it'll still make bank as well um yeah, they're they're gonna have a good they're gonna have a decent year and they'll set it all pre- and finish off the year decently. 
I say decently when it comes to money. <laughs> decently. Um, decently. Like, and then you go into spring next year with Zelda, if it does come out at the end of the uh, financial year for them. Um, they'll finish off the that year, the, that financial year incredibly well. Well, it does say Zelda, spring. I think. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me, it does say spring, which is March, but also April. <laughs> <laughs> and may so like it's it's a toss up like basically at some point in early 2023 they're expecting to release breath of the breath of the wild sequel joe joe medfoss always gets really angry when i say breath of the wild 2 <laughs> it's not called breath of the wild 2 it's the breath of the wild oh. sequel um okay. it'll have a different title but yeah like that that's like the, this year their big thing is pokemon next year the big thing is zelda and maybe there'll be like a mario or something at the end of 2023 um the only thing i can see them adding to this is a fire emblem game <laughs> like we heard rumors about that a few months ago um and like i could like i can look at the games that are coming out and then bayonetta well, and pokemon and mario this year? yeah course they well. they're releasing two Warriors. pokemons this year <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the thing about it. This is the different financial year. Oh, here we go. Leg Arceus came out last financial year. This is past Mr. The, Pokemon this is the Expert. Financial year. Why Who not? Pokemon Expert? If there's a fucking Fire Emblem game of release, why not fucking release it? Yeah, true, 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 true. Don't deny that. <laughs> Plus, they're yeah. completely different games. Like, three, three, three Hops is just a spin off. Like they've got a massive year, man. You got Mario Strikers, Fire Emblem. Warriors, I never said they didn't. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying. Oh, my goodness, Sammy. Really, stop taking what I say that I'm you insulting literally, you. I'm not taking it as an insult, but you literally just disagreed with me the sentence before that. Did I? <laughs> so I've, I just assumed this was a continuation of that. Did I disagree with yeah. you? With the what Fire Emblem say? thing, they won't. They won't release. They might release. I was like, no, they might. I <laughs> I said, would they? That's all. I didn't say they wouldn't. Just fucking continue with what you were saying. Stop having a go at me. <laughs> I'm not having a go at you! Very sensitive. <laughs> they got a lot of games coming out this year. They're going to be perfectly fine. Pokemon will be one of the biggest games selling this year. Start up there. Done. Top 10. Yes. I'd be interested in all Like, the only thing, like, we dropped the NPD for this year because it was starting to get boring talking about it not talking about Call of Duty um, every month. Uh, the only thing I'm interested in is, I wonder if Elden Ring is actually going to outsell Call of Duty. No. I don't know. I can't see it. I can't. It's an interesting It's an interesting move. Like, Call of Duty is going to be a massive game, regardless of what Call of Duty comes out, but with the events of this year specifically, it's an interesting move to, really, to, to make the Call of Duty you're going to release Modern Warfare 2. Just, uh, it's very, it's very interesting move that. Still can't see it. It's Call of Duty. Oh, but if it happens, bet. fantastic and everything like that. No, I'm not betting. No? Ah, okay. No, I don't bet. It's not, I'm not telling, I'm not saying we're going to bet money. Jesus. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Put your non-money way your mouth is. I'll st I'll there. stake it on I'll st I'll stake it on there and say yeah sure I think I think it might so I think it will boom did it yeah, good for you sure a game about um fighting the those evil pesky Russians starting World War Three is going to go down a real treat um Probably, in twenty twenty two hell yeah how you do it. It's exactly what you want from your escapist media. <laughs> That's how it's going to make them make money. <laughs> Here's a question, completely unrelated to Nintendo. It's going to be its own little two-minute timestamp. You remember Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Had, a very, had a very famously controversial um, level uh, towards mm -hmm. the beginning of the game. Do you think that is going to be in the game no. when it comes out later this year? No. No. You clearly do. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's Activision Blizzard. They just released a diversity index, which fucking, which we just talked about. Like they'll do anything, regardless of how stupid they are it stupid. is. They're stupid. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Um, well, this is the thing. This game was has easily been in development for at least two years, sure, sure, if yeah. not a lot, uh, if not three. 
So this has happened all way more before everything that's happened in the world and everything like that. So no, for me, no, they won't put that in. You could skip it in the original game. You could just make it a quick cutscene of a news report talking about what happened. They can't not do the plot because, like, <laughs> then you, well, they probably well they probably could. the The entire plot of the game hinges on that. <laughs> like that moment has to happen in the game, otherwise the game doesn't happen. <laughs> and I mean, it's Call of Duty. It doesn't need a plot, right? But like, you know, they they like to think that it does. I apologize to anyone who writes for Call of Duty. That was a low blow. I didn't feel good as I was saying it, but like, yeah, the whole story, like hangs off of no Russian so unless they're just frantically editing the game so that the bad guys aren't Russian Russia anymore I don't know what they're doing really it's it's just it's a it's a weird one for me when I saw it I was like okay like I get it they were planning this for years but like at the same time it's just like interesting <laughs> it'd be like releasing it would have been like releasing um you know pandemic the video game in twenty in then twenty twenty and being like interesting move. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> oh. the game will still be fighting Russians. I just don't think they'll have that type of scene in what you say. No, I'm saying like the story beat will still be in there, but I don't think the, I don't think the level itself will probably will be in there. Yeah, probably not. Then again, it's Activision Blizzard. I could see them going, well, no, uh, no publicity. Uh, all publicity is good publicity. Yeah, that's what they all say. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's move on from <coughs> Nintendo to Activision Blizzard King to EA. EA lists four unannounced games, including, quote, major IP, end quote, to launch before April 2023. This is from Tom Phillips again over at Eurogamer. He writes, EA has had four unannounced games set to arrive between January and the 1st of April 2023, one of which is described as, quote, a major IP, end quote, it told investors last week. The other three mystery titles include a remake, a sports title, and a partner title, likely meaning one of the various studios EA publishes games for, such as It Takes Two's Haze Light. Alongside those, EA has its upcoming and final FIFA game and Madden NFL 2023 20, set for this autumn before NHL 23 and the long-awaited Need for Speed turn up before Christmas. Uh, and then after this, this came out, they announced that the Dead Space remake was confirmed for release in January 2023. So that's the remake out of the four games that they were talking about. The major IP, that's Star Wars. I mean, yeah, that's what they're probably intending to bring out is Star Wars in in the first few months of 2023. Well, your favorite person, Jeff Grubb, apparently has said that... I don't want to hear it. I've seen it. release, ...release it this year, and it's apparently called Star Wars Survive. God forbid... I've seen that news story every fucking way. Jeff Grubb said this. <laughs> fucking Jesus, man. <laughs> the thing is, I, look, I think it's brilliant. I think it's so funny. He really makes me laugh because he says these things and then he complains when people <laughs> think take him, take what he says as serious and gospel and it's like the, it's the Holy Grail and everything like that. And I'm just like, just because don't they... say it anymore, mate. Stop your job. Do, just don't say stuff. Because, y- yeah. <laughs> To stop it, type of thing. Yeah, no. Um, ah, it's like no doubt about it. I think if they can get Star Wars out this year, they will try uh, and get Star Wars out. There's January no or that. April. Like they're already there. This is them admitting it's not coming out this year. The probably yeah. The thing about Jeff Grubb, I would say, is it, like at this point, if I was Jeff Grubb, I'd start saying wild shit on purpose. <laughs> That what that I knew wasn't true, but um, like that's just me, and maybe Jeff Grubb's doing that as well. Like maybe we've got the same sense of humor, yeah. but um, yeah, that's no, when like the Dino Crisis remake happens. Yeah, he says Jeff Grubb should be like Dino Crisis the remake is happening, and I'll, and I'll be like, I'm not telling movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, I, I doubt that, but um, yeah, I think the major IP is Star Wars, um, yeah. Jedi Fallen Order sequel. Um, I think this is them admitting that it's not coming out in 2022, which is totally fair. Um, I yeah. believe it was Jeff Grubb himself earlier this year who said, "Oh, well, it's coming out this year." Yeah. Um, it's almost Apparently, like we don't talk about everything Jeff Grubb says on this podcast for a reason. <laughs> um, yeah, continue. Yeah. No, no. Apparently, uh, there's no games thing at Star Wars Celebration. So, like, a lot of people are considering that, like, uh, we, we might not even see the game in there. 
yeah, this is what I was thinking as well. Like this Star a Star Wars Jedi Fallen on a game coming out in the first three months of twenty twenty three doesn't strike me as something that's gonna happen. Like irregardless, like I I I imagine the major IP that they're saying that they're planning to release in the first quarter of twenty twenty three is Star Wars. I just don't think it's gonna actually come out in the first quarter of twenty twenty three for a variety of reasons. That being one of them. Like Yeah. You need to start seeing it because then at that point it's less than a year away from coming out when not you start seeing the game. It, yeah. <laughs> like you're maybe, not doing E3, so you got to show it somewhere. Maybe, and this is gonna sound like a dick, and it's not. But <laughs> how fucking <laughs> fuck! It just made me. <laughs> not at you, not at you, not at oh, you, okay, okay. not at you. Don't worry. Uh, maybe they'll do what they did last time when they revealed the name for it, and oh, they'll just have Jesus. the director sit at. Um, Jeff Keighley's thing in June, and he'll they'll have um, what's her name from what what what's good games? Gonna have to narrow it down. Uh, Andrea, Andrea. They'll have Andrea Renee there sitting next to him. Say, what's the game called? And I love her the bits. I think she's amazing. But it's like that was one of the worst things I ever she, saw. I mean, it. like Andrea is cool and all. But she has had to front some shit in her time. Like shit, she, yeah. she was, she was the the person who was on the stage after the E three for Anthem, and it's just yeah. like Jesus, I'm so sorry. Oh, you don't, you, you don't that. deserve yeah. this. You do um, not deserve this. Yeah, but no, yeah, they'll have some schmuck sitting next to him and they'll say it's called Jedi Fall, Jedi Survive or whatever. Which... It's called Jedi Fallen Order Two. What the fuck did you think it was going to be called? <laughs> I'd love it for that. It'd just be the response. <laughs> Uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see you next year. Wait, what? No, no, no game. No, no, no. It's not coming out this year. What? Um, yeah, I see. I don't. I see that as a fall 2023 title for a multitude of different reasons. You think it's fall next year in yeah, general, do you? I do. There's no doubt about it. Like, yeah, like when did I fall in I don't see out, Dead Space was, coming but, out in January. I'm just gonna put that out there as well. Oh yeah, I agree with that as well. Like, yeah. Um, it's gonna be fascinating. There's no doubt about it. Like. I'm fascinated to see what's going to happen. Like either way, like like we said on the Microsoft story, none of the studios want to be the next Cyberpunk. So for them, yeah, you know, Jedi Fallen Order had a few bugs when it came out. It was it was a great game, but it wasn't. It was buggy. It was very buggy. Yeah. Um, I don't really care. I don't know enough about sports titles to really speculate on what sports title they're bringing out in the first few months of next year but as far they as they throw the, them and they're, they're boogie yeah. and they still make money so they don't care um, <laughs> as far as the partner title goes I imagine that's um, Unravel 3 or whatever that studio is working on as their next game that would be my sort of thoughts around what that oh, game potentially is three. It's been a while. Me too. It's been a while since two. Um, And if they're working on a third game or they're working on a whatever completely different game, like I think, I think that's that's what that partner title is. Someone said, "Oh, it'll be the next game from Hazelight." I was like, "It takes two came out last year, guys. Calm down." Yeah, they haven't (laughs) scaled up that big enough to be able to do two teams at once. No, to what we know, so. Um, they might be able to do now because obviously it takes two was an incredible success for them so they might be able to scale up to two teams now and then get two projects rolling but uh, again yeah, now it, not two yeah, years it ago all, when it would have <laughs> when it would have meant all, a game could come out it all depends how much bloody um the director is willing to to uh to i mean separate his duties or he won't. He won't it, want to do two projects at once. No, really. it could be. No, I'm not entertaining this any further. He he'll do one project at a time because he is he's he like looking at interviews and stuff of him talking about the making of like a way out and it takes two. He he brings that filmmaker mentality to the games that he develops. He's not going to make two games at once. He's going to focus on doing one game because he brings that like the whatever game he is working on is the game that he wants to work on. It's the story that he wants to tell. And yeah, also they're making an It Takes Two movie, so you know it's a bit busy. Um, the partner title could also be a new studio that EA are gonna EA partners are gonna partner with. But I, yeah. I have a feeling it's gonna be Unravel Three or whatever that studio is working on. 
Anyway, we'll do one more news story. A week after selling its Western studios, Square Enix says it will establish or buy new ones. This is from Andy Robinson over at VGC. He writes, Square Enix has indicated that it intends to establish and or acquire new game studios. In the same month, it's confirmed it's agreed to sell off its biggest Western developers. Swedish company Embracer announced last week that it has agreed to acquire a large part of Square Enix's Western development arm for $300 million, including Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, Square Montreal, and a catalogue of IPs including Tomb Raider and Deus Ex. In an official statement, Square Enix said at the time that the deal would let it focus on investments in blockchain, AI, and the cloud. In its financial results published on Friday, the Final Fantasy publisher was able to further explain its reasoning behind the sell-offs. It said the sales would allow it to achieve sustained growth through, quote, selection and concentration of company resources, end quote, better aligning overseas publishing operations with its Tokyo HQ and focusing on new businesses such as blockchain, AI, and the cloud. The company said it intended to reshape its digital entertainment portfolio partly through creating new IP, speeding up decision-making through an integrated group management, and, quote, boosting game development capabilities by establishing new studios, excuse me, m and etc., end quote. Although it may seem surprising that Square Enix is already looking to establish studios so soon after selling established developers, it's likely the company intends to pursue a different direction more closely aligned with its latest company goals. In a statement issued alongside the Embracer announcement last week, Square Enix said, quote, Going forward, the company's development function will comprise its studios in Japan, Square Enix External Studios and Square Enix Collective. It added the company's overseas studios will continue to publish franchises such as Just Cause, Outriders, and Life is Strange, end quote. <laughs> It'd be funny a no, meme really. about this, but, um, I mean, it makes sense for them to found new studios. Like, it seems like they're, they don't want to develop Western games anymore, <laughs> essentially, like, as a thing. Like, I- ignoring the the elephant in the room that is, like, blockchain and NFTs for a second. Like, I feel like they don't want to develop Western games anymore. They want to develop their core, like, Japanese stuff. Um, so it makes sense that they would push th- those developers out in terms of, like, Montreal and stuff, and then maybe, like, like found more developers to make more Final Fantasy spin-offs or whatever JRPG games they decide they're going to make next. I mean, they mentioned new IPs at some point in that statement. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can understand what they're saying, yeah, what that's what they're probably going to maybe do and probably buy them on the cheap and maybe upscale them or something like that, maybe. I don't really know. Or eventually just get bought, bought by Sony, like I said last year. Last, <laughs> last week and all that. Well, stuff. I mean, I both. This... Last year, last week. Yeah, last I month. I stand by that this will happen, <laughs> personally. But, um, yeah, it's not surprising that they're going to look for someone, like what you just said, uh, find someone who probably will work on their Japanese titles, which is the more profitable thing for them, apart from taking the elephant out of the room, like the blockchain and the <laughs> NFT shite, which uh, will basically get, will slap them in the face so hard. Oh, they definitely. Will, will, will be cheaper for Sony to buy. <laughs> um, there might only be IPs left for them to buy by the time Square Enix is finished with blockchain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we shouldn't laugh about the potential demise of a massive video game publisher and all of the people who work there but like we'll see how many final fa- copies of final fantasy 16 it takes to buy a picture of an ape <laughs> Big, the, the cryptocurrency market's in free fall i don't know if square enix wants to double down on this right now mm-hmm. there's an entire country out there that bet on um el is el salvador i think it was like bet on um, cryptocurrency have bought a shitload of it and made it part one of the thing one of their legal tenders in their country um, and they're about a default on all of their debt because they can't afford to pay anything because cryptocurrency has crashed <laughs> um, their country is fucked <laughs> um, and it's not funny but I mean it's not funny for the people that live in that country but it's, it's exactly. pretty funny that the the, the president of that country did this like he was building they were building bitcoin city in that country at one point if you google bitcoin city you'll probably find out about a lot more about it um as far as square enix goes like don't i mean i could beg and say please don't do this thing that is really stupid but you're gonna do it 
Yeah, they've already said they're doing it in FNX, so. so let them do it and let them get slapped in the face when it happens to it. Like, it's the, right now, blockchain and NFTs is the one thing that it still seem like the game, video game industry is kind of rejecting right now. Like, they are not, like, the cryptocurrency and FNX is in free fall right now, which is great to see and it's what we want to hear. Um, for it, so like, like I say it like all the time, like if EA are backing out of it and aren't saying a single thing, like the worst <laughs> company in the one of the worst companies in the bloody video game industry is backing off on it, and all they care about is money. Damn man, like there's something that that's a that's that's a sign. I'm telling you, that's just a sign in itself. Is that one of the greediest companies in the world in video game? In the video game industry is literally saying, nah. You know I'm what? Out. Like, oh, <laughs> this new thing, people are making getting rich off of it. And then three months later going, we're good. We're cool. We're good. That's a sign. <laughs> yeah. we, we, you, you we, hear we, we the got e FIFA. It's good. <laughs> EA, EA once, yeah, I don't know if I, how many people might remember this, but EA, EA once tried to take on the used game market by creating DLC that you could only get if you bought the game new. Otherwise, you had to spend ten dollars on it. It was called Project Ten Dollar. That's how greedy EA is. Like, if 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 it was possible to make a shit ton of money out of cryptocurrency and NFTs. EA would be all over this right now. <laughs> They'd be going full speed ahead. Apex Legends NFTs would be minted as we speak. They would they they would be the fart in the crypto hurricane. Yeah. Uh, it's not gonna work out <laughs> for anybody that gets involved. Yeah. Like yeah. it's 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 whole, a gigantic yeah. pyramid scheme and we're start it feels like we're starting to accelerate towards the point where everybody who has been hustled into it is now going to lose a lot of money and it sucks for them it really does but enough people have been screaming that this is a terrible idea for long enough that the information was out there the entire time that you shouldn't probably fuck around with this i'm not gonna lie i don't feel sorry for any of the people <laughs> If you've been a schmuck who's been sucked into this, sucked into this, and hasn't done any research about this, that is your fault. That's knowing how, mean. knowing how algorithm, knowing how social media algorithms work, so off. No one really knows how they like work a hundred percent. But like, no, no, they, they know. Yeah, no, knowing what, knowing what I know. Let me rephrase that. Knowing what I know about how social media algorithms work, it's very easy to fall into a rabbit hole. And then just continue to tunnel through that rabbit hole, right? It's like you'll click on a video about NFTs and how cool they are. Like how much money. Like you click on a video that says someone made like a million dollars on like doing a Bitcoin thing or like selling an NFT, right? And you click on it because you're like, shit, a million dollars is a lot of money. I could really use a million dollars. And then that's what the algorithm starts feeding you. <laughs> And it will just be constant positivity about how great NFTs are and how great Bitcoin is and how great cryptocurrency is. I can see how people can get sucked down into that. Normal people. I'm not talking about corporations or rich people. I'm just talking about how normal people can get sucked into a into into an algorithm where all they're seeing is the crypto bros and the positivity that they're throwing out there. To maybe go, oh, maybe I should invest in this. It might be a way for me to make money because, you know, my three jobs don't pay me enough to live. Um. <laughs> so I I do feel sorry for the regular people who got caught up in everything about this. I I don't feel sorry for the rich people who hopefully have lost a great deal of money and should have known better. Mm. Uh, it's time for tidbits. Go for it. It's more of the same, really. Um. Not about NFTs. The Dead Space thing I already did. Contractors at BioWare Edmonton who are trying to unionize now aren't being forced to return to the office. No surprise. Yes. It's nice yeah, when a company you. goes, oh yeah, we're not going to try and kill you. Or infect you with a disease that could kill you. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> the the day. Just, uh, just continue to be careful out there, everyone. Indeed, indeed, and um, I hope the the contractors at Bioware Keywords Studios, I think, is the contract studio at Bioware, and, and I hope you get to unionize yeah. soon. Yeah. Be even though they aren't, they, even though they're not going to force you to go to work, to go return to the office, 
still unionize. You should still unionize because if you vote it, if you vote no, then there'll be nothing to stop them from then forcing you back into the office and you fuck fucked up and voted no. Unions make your life better. There's a reason why the companies and the CEOs and, and and all of your bosses are trying desperately to convince you that they're a bad idea. It's because they hate them and they'll be good for you. That's how that works. Uh, there's new Callisto protocol news coming sometime this week. Fascinating. I mean, we always said um, Callisto protocol needs that. Uh, there was a few, was it a couple of weeks ago? We talked about it needing really to needing to come out before dead space, dead space really. so yeah, yeah. um it's interesting timing like because next week isn't the summer of gaming <laughs> or not yeah, e3 yeah. you would think they would wait until then do you think there's a state of play this week do you, i wouldn't I, like i thought this when i saw the news and i was thinking about it and i was like i know it wasn't revealed at a state of play um, but I just I wonder if the Callisto protocol being like we're gonna have some news coming this week. I just wonder if it's appearing at a at a state of play that PlayStation might be putting on. Mm, I do not know, honestly. At the end of the day, like PlayStation are like very aloof when it comes to what they decide and when they want to talk about stuff. Like they just had one, what was it, like a month ago now? Month and a half ago? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, when it was about the, all the the, the 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 Japanese studios who were doing all the games for them and everything like that. Um, oh, the Japanese state. Of the yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was the yeah. not Dino Crisis one. Yeah, I remember yeah, that was, was fun. Like, it was I'm one sure time. That was like only six weeks ago. Yeah, it was, but it was also that. focused entirely on the Japanese development yeah, studios. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Partners. I think they're gonna. They got to do. I think they're gonna wait until after Microsoft do theirs in June, so they I got think it. they might push theirs till July. I just wonder if they're gonna do it because they wanna talk about PS plus as well. They ought to talk about uh, those yeah, games at some yeah. point. Um because they, they might just do that as a blog post, but they might do it as a state of play. And if you're gonna do it yeah. as a state of play, you might as well do a state of play. Yeah. Um I don't think I don't think there's I necessarily work for, like, I work for them and I completely forgot that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I went on I went on the PS Plus app, uh, the PS app, the PlayStation app on my phone to have a look at like new game releases. Um just to see what was out and see if there was anything that like stood out that I didn't already know about. And it turns out I haven't been subscribed to PS Plus for like three months. <laughs> it lapsed and I just completely forgot and I didn't even notice. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh oops. I need I need it back because I'm gonna play a multiplayer game, but I was I just found it funny that I was like at some point, it stopped, and I just, I just didn't notice until I was like, "Oh, that's weird." It says there's a PS Plus discount <laughs> on this new release, but I don't have the PS Plus. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I, I like, I'd say it's fifty for me personally in my mind. I'd say it's fifty fifty that State of Play Callisto Protocol is going to be shown off as part of that. Like a Western focus so state of play. Like it's just when that's all. Oh, I mean, they're going to do something within the next few months, for sure. Like, they, they could do mobile things over the next few months, for sure. Um, it's just it's the 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 connection in my brain between um that and that those two things. Um, next up. Gotham Knights' PS4 and Xbox One versions have been cancelled and the game will be a current gen only release. Good idea. Less work for the comp the studio to work on and just work on one project one product. So yeah, it's a good idea. A lot I'm seeing like a lot of companies are now starting to do this. Like there's enough PlayStation 5s, there's a new Xbox, there's enough Xbox Series X's and S's out there in the wild. For them to be confident enough that they'll make a, at least a good profit on it now. So yeah, yeah, that's not a surprise to me. We'll find out. Um I the thing as well about video games is like the market isn't like it was ten years ago where it was like it was all or nothing on the first week or the first months of sales, right? And then after that, games didn't have tails for the most part. Like you still sold some and then sales like actual like sales discounts would bump it every now and again but now a lot of video games have long tails people aren't necessarily going right out and buying games 
brand new at launch straight away and then it just drops off a cliff and dies um because i don't know if there are necessarily enough current generation consoles out in the wild like i don't know the maths of it but <laughs> at some point you got to make that leap and normally by now we wouldn't have very like in a normal console generation cycle like we wouldn't have very many cross generation triple a games by this point anyway um so it's it's obviously extended because of the the issues of the chip shortages and not being able to sell as many playstations and xboxes as and switches i guess as they would want but eventually you just got to make that jump right so yeah eventually you gotta, you gotta just go for it it's gonna be interesting we'll and see. gotham knights is going for it i yeah. should have put this in the this next one in the uh the EA thing up top, but our EA's merged Criterion and Codemasters Cheshire at work on Need for Speed. Codemasters have like a lot of lot of part, a lot of teams, so that this is not a surprise. Like they did like last year F one and Dirt, so they had two teams working on it. So, cool. so they always have a lot. They they do. Hopefully, it doesn't crunch too much into their time and everything like that. But two teams working on it at the same time. We'll see what happens. And code masters, they're the math. They are one of the masters out there when it comes to driving games. So, just find it funny that there was a. I did. I didn't realize there was game development out in Cheshire. <laughs> More than anything, when it was like code masters Cheshire, I was like, "Oh, my cousin lives out in Cheshire. <laughs> Let me look it up." And I looked it up, and I was like, "Oh wait, that's the same place they live." <laughs> Wild. <laughs> I didn't think that you'd have game developers all the way out there. Yes. Um, Capcom sold a record number of games in the past year, driven by Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 7, Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and the PC release of Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise on PC has been massive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely massive. So, yeah, congratulations, Capcom. Like, Capcom, like, well, wasn't it like. Say five, maybe six years now, everyone was thinking... They were fucking... Capcom, they were... Where are they? They, they were in trouble. Dying. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation like, had to fund the development of Street Fighter Five. Yeah. Um, and everyone was thinking, oh, maybe Microsoft maybe buys them, or maybe Sony buys them, something like that. And it's just like, yeah, that would, what, when you look back, it, and I was thinking, yeah, that wouldn't be a surprise, and they probably could get them on a pretty darn good cheap deal and everything. But that, I mean, it was, was it was reasonable at the time, yeah. Um, yeah. Resident Evil 7 really fucking saved their bacon. Oh, hell yeah, and it revived them. Brought out Monster Hunter World. Yep. And then obviously the, the DLC, extend, the, 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 the add-ons they've added for that. Village, uh, Remix. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Resident Evil Remix. And, and Monster Hunter Rise, they've had... The low level stuff Capcom that they've released have as well. had an exceptional, exceptional last few years and they've deserved it. They've put out some great games. The Devil May Cry, for God's sakes, let's forget, don't forget that either. That was that was a brilliant game when that came out. And like, yeah, I'm still waiting for my Dino Crisis remake, you bastards. <laughs> um, well, maybe now, now that they're in a better position. I don't know if releasing it while they were in danger would have been a good idea, but um yeah i mean they've really they really have saved themselves like it's it's you see, we've seen it across the the history of the video games industry you know we see a lot of big publishers get in trouble and then get more trouble and then they're gone so it was it was quite interesting to see a publisher get in trouble and then get in more trouble and then save itself with essentially a brand new engine i feel like the re engine really was what saved them <laughs> it's a great engine, um no yeah you know because you got bring out resident evil, resident evil 7 you bring out monster Hunter world like both of those games ran on the re engine they came out within like a year of each other um and fucking the sales of both of those games like they, they were tremendous quality games uh resident evil 7 arguably saved the franchise like as much as resident evil yeah. 6 was a what was a good was a, a game that sold a lot of units not a lot of people liked that and the series didn't have a lot of goodwill especially when it was followed up by some of the spin-offs that came out after it <laughs> like umbrella yeah. core um so that resident evil 7 really saved that franchise um 
and then obviously Monster Hunter World just fucking exploded when it came out. Yeah, Monster Hunter World is like it's been incredible for them. It really has, and like I said, like well, like Capcom, like we don't really know much what they're doing right now for like the next year and a half, eighteen months right now. So. That's why this is in tidbits because it was like they didn't really talk about what's comes next. It was more just yeah, what happened. So that kind of tells me they've got that they, they know. Well, obviously, they've got something to reveal and stuff to show. That kind of tells me you might be right that. Sony are coming soon. They're um, going to be announcing the state of play soon. So but Street Street Fighter Six is is already confirmed because I remember we saw that logo um, yeah. a little while ago. Um, their plan originally to release a Resident Evil every year. I don't think that's going to happen because <laughs> I don't think we're going to get a Resident which Evil is, this year. Which is good. At the end of but the day, which is good. if that was their plan, if that was what they were working towards, there's, I mean, we had that leak a couple of years ago to know that if. If they're still working somewhat to that leak, like we both kind of figured, I think everybody kind of figured that like this isn't going to be like the concrete plan of what Capcom is working on. But like, there's Resident Evils in the pipeline. Um, maybe Resident one of those is now ready. Whatever the next big multi-platform month monster, monster hunter, hunter is, yeah, like that. That is like everyone's. I think where that is. I don't think. I think that's going to be a more bigger reveal than the next Resident Evil. Monster Hunter World too. A hundred percent. Like the next Resident yeah. Evil isn't gonna be Resident Evil Nine. Like the next Resident Evil is gonna be Reve- oh, yeah. a, a Revelations Three or a Four remake. It's not gonna be like the big Resident Evil sequel. Um so like Monster Hunter World Two. Monster Hunter World's their biggest game. Like yeah. Monster Hunter World Two is gonna take pride of place in whenever they decide to to reveal that. Like, I know we had Rise, but Rise was made by a different team. It was made so that they could have a Monster Hunter on Switch. <laughs> like, because yeah. they didn't have one on Switch and World wasn't going to go on Switch. And then they realized, oh, this has actually been a big success. We must put it on PC. <laughs> it was a great game. <laughs> it was. It was a really good game. Was both of was in top twenty for both of us? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was on our yeah. game of the years list. Law because sure. obviously we couldn't get back to it and we couldn't play enough of it. To that was that, that was like if that game had come out in twenty twenty two, because I had now have the new Switch dock with the Ethernet port, so the internet was stable. Like we would probably be smashing the shit out of that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just it was a it was an unfortunate coincidence of timing. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, low crap, Capcom. Good on you. It's great to hear a great, a great turn, an underdog story that turned itself around and become great again. Become the Capcom we know you guys can be. And now, just give me my Dino Crisis remake. I will never stop saying that. Lastly, I will die saying that. Dino. I love you, baby. Dino Crisis. holding holding a, a like a fake box art cover thing you've made of Dino Crisis. I've Bring got me. the Dino Crisis one game in my uh, for my PlayStation bedroom. Five. Just Dino Crisis. <laughs> yeah, and then they announce it. They'll announce it then. <laughs> well, <laughs> so with your permission, of course, if that's the course of events that happens, I will record this, and then I will use that recording to, in your honor, get Dino Crisis <laughs> remake to be a thing. I'm going to guilt them with it. <laughs> Look, he wanted it right up until his last, literally his last breath. He was thinking about Dino Crisis. I also just want to say, I don't intend to go for a good long time here. Well, yeah, but they're never going to make Dino Crisis. That's <laughs> so. true, like, yeah. Which, I, I have to say, it's absolutely weird. Dinosaurs are incredibly popular. Literally incredibly popular. Every documentary always does incredibly well. Love or hate the franchise, Jurassic Park does incredibly well when it comes financially and everything, and it always gets a big pop. And yet somehow, we don't have this dinosaur, di- Dino Crisis remake. We're getting a dinosaur game from them, which was a slap in the face, because you literally had the character who looked like the main fucking... Cr- I'm going on a rant, stop me. I was just looking for my book. Um, <laughs> just, the... Um, yeah, no, I mean, you're not, look, right, you're not wrong. I don't, when I say, and sometimes make fun of you, like, they're not going to make it, they're not making a Dino Crisis remake, I want you to know that I I agree with you. Like, a cool, a cool Dino me, Crisis yeah. remake would be awesome. I just don't think they're making one. I think that, I know. like, I think they think, 
I think I, I think too. they think having a character that looks a bit like Regina in that whatever that fucking and the problem is I don't even the, the the irony is I don't even remember what that game is called but the game that they showed a few a couple of months ago <laughs> clip guard caught at the all PlayStation of that event. but yeah at the PlayStation <laughs> event which I don't remember but like I don't know man like you rebuilt your reputation by giving fans of franchises what they want <laughs> A Dino Crisis remake isn't going to hit the numbers <clears throat> that Resident Evil does. It's just not. But I think it'll sell pretty well. I think if you make it with a small team, because you, you stick to the scope of the original game, like, you make it a, a smaller project, I think you can make some decent money off of it. I think you'll, you'll sell enough to, to make some decent money off of it, as long as they don't make it expecting it to be as big a hit as Resident Evil 7 or village i think i you're right there i think if you i think it could hit the numbers of resi 3 remake um sure i don't know what those were but i'll take like like two three million i think yeah yeah in that sort of region yeah like i think you could make a you could make a solid case for for that to happen yeah, no doubt about with the right it, marketing which is basically just you want a scary game with dinosaurs in it that's the marketing yeah. campaign. <laughs> that's the marketing campaign that looks like Resident Evil fucking 2 remake and 3 remake that's the campaign that's that's the whole campaign you add a thing in you add a dinosaur in right like Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 remake just fucking stalking you every now and again you can even use the same AI <laughs> And the same re- uh, engine as well. I was going to say a T Rex, but then I was like, well, that probably would be a bit too hard to do. Like T Rex just comes crashing raptor. through the thing. Oh fuck! It'd be like a, be like a raptor, a raptor. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know enough about dinosaurs. For my sh- <clears throat> to my shame. But anyway, that was our Dino Crisis uh, interlude. I just wanted to let you have it. Once you started going, I was like, you know what? It's his last podcast for a few weeks. I'm just going to let you have let this go. one. I'm just going to let you have this one. Just go for it. You go just for it, man. You got it out. You got it out of your system. You'll be back just in time for E3. <laughs> I would fucking... Right. Here's a chain of events that would be very funny to me personally. Right. You go back. You're doing your, your thing. You're not available for the podcast for the next few weeks. Sony does a state of play announces a dino crisis remake you can't be on the podcast to talk about it <laughs> i can't be on the podcast to react to it or anything i know i know amy Me i know <laughs> that it's either that game or the vine the final the eventual reveal of the final fantasy 9 remake that <laughs> either of those two things happening while you're off on the podcast if you click on that timestamp on youtube it's like we're just gonna be laughing for five minutes <laughs> I know, five minutes long yeah i know what that is <laughs> yeah yeah ruffle yeah. um anyway we should uh <clears throat> motor on towards the end of this podcast we've got some games coming out this week on may 18th we've got recursive room coming to pc a kaleidoscopic narrative puzzle game in which an artist comes to terms with their grief explore an infinitely recursive world of strange fractal beauty and solve mind-bending puzzles confront the ineffable and chat with your cat in a search for meaning and hope then on may 19th we've got vampire the masquerade swan song coming to playstation xbox switch and pc based on the cult role-playing game and developed by specialists in the genre vampire the masquerade swan song is a narrative rpg in which your every choice determines the fate of the three main characters <coughs> excuse me and of the boston camarilla also on may 19th deadcraft comes to playstation xbox switch and pc farm the dead to stay alive in deadcraft a new twist on the zombie survival action genre as a half zombie grow an army of loyal undead followers and build an arsenal to equip them to take revenge on the rulers of humanity's last city Finally, on May 20th, Dolmen comes to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Dolmen is a terrifying new action RPG that combines futuristic that combines futuristic sci-fi and cosmic horror elements. Will your timeline be erased or will you defeat your enemies to survive and fulfill your mission? Quite excited for that vampire game. It's not just because Bloodlines 2 is dead and never coming out. <clears throat> um like when I, I think I talked about this with you specifically, where I was like, I've, when I when I looked it up and found out that it was by the developers of a cool, a really cool narrative game that I played years ago called The Council, I was like, oh my, oh okay, like it went from, I know this exists to, cool, I'm actually gonna play this when it comes out, so quite excited. 
Um, you are muted. Muted. Still muted. <laughs> I'm quite happy to hear that you are you're happy, you're excited for a vampire masquerade game with all the shit that's happened with that franchise. It's been a, I have no idea what that deal. franchise is. All I know is that there's a vampire in it. And Amy loved the first game, and she's been waiting forever for the second game. And then the second game last year basically just it disappeared. Slapped her really hard. Exploded. And her in the back. Imploded. <laughs> disappeared up its own ass. <laughs> And created yeah. <laughs> a singularity. Um, no, Vampire uh, the Masquerade. One signality, it's real, and the other, which is sadly us, it doesn't yeah. exist. <laughs> Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is one of my favorite games. Don't play it. <laughs> Cause it hasn't aged well. It's not that it hasn't aged <clears throat> well, or it probably hasn't aged well. The, the issue is, like, the history of uh, the brief history of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines was it was being developed by a, a company called Troika Games um, as an immersive sim set in the Vampire the Masquerade universe. And on that front, for the most part, it is one of the best immersive sims I've ever played in my entire life. The problem is, it was being published by a company called Activision. And Activision wanted that game to come out on the same day as Half Life 2 because they wanted Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines to be the first non Half Life source engine game to be released. So not only did it come out on the same day as one of the most popular games of the 2000s, but it was also it was also unfinished because that deadline was a hard deadline and the developers couldn't finish it. The developers then went out of business and couldn't patch the game so it would actually work properly. So the last part of the game is basically um, a straight run to from through th- through several linear missions. There's bugs everywhere. Like you've got to work hard to love it. Thanks, Activision. <laughs> Like there's fan patches and there's fan. That's the gr- yeah, <laughs> that is the greatest sell ever. You gotta work hard. You gotta to work love hard. I love game. it. There is a game in there that you could love, but I always say like, unless you're willing to work for it, to find that game, it's not worth trying. <laughs> Go watch someone play it. <laughs> oh my goodness! But it is a it is a tremendous, tremendous game that with a lot of flaws. It's time. For open critic head to head. This is the game myself and whoever's here play every single week where we try to guess the upcoming average open critic average of one upcoming game. Whoever guesses closest to the score gets a point. If you manage to guess the score correctly, you get two points. Last week, we tried to guess the open critic average of Evil Dead the game. And despite it having enough reviews on open critic, it currently doesn't have an open critic average. So thanks for that open critic. Basically, we'll we'll get the score for it next, next week. week. Yeah. Um, it seems to be doing better than we both expected. Looking at the five reviews that are currently on Open Critic, a seven out of ten, a two out of five, which is a six out, which will translate to a six out of ten. No, four out of ten. Yeah, four out of ten, and then an eight out of ten, a nine out of ten, and a seven out of ten. So that four is going to drag the average down, but. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I didn't expect to see any nines mm-hmm. like in the score, so that was interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll have a score for that next week, and then we'll be able to add it to the list. Um, so the score, current scores are still tied at Amy 7, Moody 7. This week, we're going to guess the open critic average of Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. Amy's going to do her best not to let her <laughs> excitement for a game ruin her chances of getting a point in open critic head to head. <laughs> 75. 75 from Moody. Yeah. As much as I'm personally looking forward to this game. And hey, I hope it surprises me, but uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's not on my other fantasy critic game team for a reason. <laughs> um... I'm going to be more optimistic than you, though, Moody, because I feel like I'm allowed like, to be more optimistic than you. So I'm going to go 77. That's where I'm going to go. I know that creates the potential for a draw. But you know what? I don't want to go any higher than that. <laughs> That's where I want to stick. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> understandable, understandable. Um, I am excited, though. Like, I feel like this is going to be a lake situation. I feel like when we get to next week or the week after when they've played the game 
and we see the open critic average, you know, and and and, and I compare that open critic average to my experience. I feel like we're going to be in a lake situation where the open critic average is really low, and I'm just sitting there looking at it going over the top of my glasses, which hopefully I'll have replaced with proper contact lenses. Just, I'll put my glasses on just just to do that. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, man. That's going to do it for episode 304 of the Words About Games podcast. We're done. We're done and dusted. You're done for another few weeks? You're back for not E3? Yes, I am back for Microsoft's thing. Did you have to go and get a job in Liverpool? Because you know how much hassle it is to organise three different people to come for three different weeks. People come on this podcast, you know, and they think, oh, it'll be a fun time. I like Amy. She's kind of cool. But then they have to listen to me talk for two hours and then they never return my DMs. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's understandable. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, I wouldn't want to spend two hours with me talking about video games. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I like it. So it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I feel for the schmuck you're going to get on next week, though. Oh, when we talk about yeah, the I'm thing. Sure yeah. The, the thing I couldn't talk about. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just... Yeah. Uh, what can I next year? I'm, I'm only on until... I'm, oh, I'm, I'm working until July, unless I get extended. Or unless I find a proper permanent job, which is closer, which is the hope of which will be. I hope you find and a job, like... But, that you can I roll hope. toward, like, that, that old thing of, like, rolling out of bed and to work would be nice. Not all the way to Liverpool. <laughs> the other side of the country. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Like, like when I'm there, like, it's really, really canny. Like, I have a lot of fun and I'm in the, and I'm so focused on my own set schedule and what I'm doing and everything. Uh, it's really kind That of makes sense. Good. Like, yeah. I'm sure it's a cool, cool job to, to do when yeah. you're actually there. Yeah, yeah, it feels really, really canny. But, um, what we need fine. is we need to get you a job QA testing <laughs> phasmophobia <laughs> get that insider access because <laughs> you know what I've said it I was playing this I was talking to my friend uh, I was uh, hanging out on discord with my friend um, Kirsty tiny shark plays on twitch and we literally played like faz for like three four hours the other night because we were like we were chatting and then we were like should we play a game together like yeah what have you got and then we compared libraries and was like we'll play a faz and like jesus if that game 1.0 launches <laughs> this year i don't give a shit if elden ring came out or not that game is going at the top of my game of the year list <laughs> it has provided so much for us over the last couple of years so you need to QA test that game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Daffid. So today we're going to have you test the uh, test the demons' responses on nightmare mode. Nope, I quit. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> thank you for thank the opportunity. <laughs> um, I wish to live, so no. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> no. Um... We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Things I mean, hey, plans. what? Well, you know, plans you, are plans. You can never predict the future, right? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I did not expect that my first career job would be with Sony. Sure, sure. I mean, at all. I, I don't mean that in a bad way. When you said PlayStation, then. I was like, it's a joke, really? right? Like memes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's gonna say, "Hi, I'm just kidding." It's such and such. Nope, it was PlayStation. Oh, okay. Started right at the top. <laughs> The only way to go from here. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Okay, okay. Don't do that. <laughs> it's up don't. because you're an amazing person. That's going to do it for episode 304 of the Words About Games podcast. Oh. Everybody out there, say goodbye to Moody for the next three weeks because he's going to be gone. We'll see him come back and hype up some games. Some games, Bye. not all the games. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.